The soap opera Empire is returning this week. It was one of last year's biggest hits, but the ratings are down. And some people say the show has jumped the shark. Emily, I know you're a super fan. Um, For those who don't know, what is Empire about? Empire is an amazing television show about a family-owned record label. It has pretty much every possible plot point you can conceive of. <laughs> um, it's it's loosely based on King Lear, and then there's also some Hamlet going on, and a whole bunch of, like, it's it's also kind of based on Jay-Z. So there's this guy, Lucius Lyon, and he was a big deal rapper, and he came up with his wife, Cookie, who was his producer. And then Cookie was set up on a drug bust and had to go to prison for 17 years. She gets out, and he's built this huge record label that she feels was her baby. And he started, like, you know, living a happy, great life as a rich, like, record executive. And she gets out and wants some of that power back. And so it's all about their relationship as a family, and their sons are pitted against each other as to become superstars. We have Jamal, who's this, like, really, really sweet singer-songwriter, kind of John Legend type. And then we have Hakeem, who's, like, rich Lil Wayne. And it's just the best. I love this show so much. So it's, so a, slice, much. it's a slice of ordinary life, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like what we can all relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, why do you think the show has struck such a nerve? Well, I mean, I think it's it's one of the better written. Uh, it's Dynasty, right? It's like it's like a melodrama uh, about rich people. There's just always a market for that. There's mm-hmm. just there always one always exists at any given point. In television, largely exists to tell that story, and it tells it everywhere in the world. It tells it in Egypt and Israel and Europe, and this is the one we have now. Uh, Rachel Empire went from 17 million viewers to about 11 million uh, last fall. It's only been on the air for a year. Why the sharp decline? Um, the show did go off the rails a little <laughs> bit in the second season. I mean, one of the things that's really interesting about the show, I think, you know, in, in a character like Cookie Lyons, who's played by uh, Taraji Henson, who is an extraordinary character, and she plays it, you know, full force. And um, uh, Terrence Howard plays uh, plays Lucius Lyon, and they're an amazing um, pairing um, on screen. The show is incredibly gifable, and it's incredibly tweetable, and so it's kind of built for the digital age of people kind of responding in real time to one another and building a community around it, which I think amped the camp value and amped amped the kind of, you know, bonkers storylines. And I think the show also kind of responds in, in real time, too, to fans' reactions. So there are plot threads that were abandoned. And <laughs> and so I think part of it is the show just, put, like, packed in more and more and more and more and and kind of lost the plot a little bit. Um, I saw an interview with the showrunner, Eileen Chaikin, saying that they're going to tone it down for the second half of the second season, um, understanding that they've gone off the rails. Mm. Um, but I do. It's an interesting thing because it does. Even though it's this massive show, it feels like it's almost being tweaked week to week um, because there is such a rabid, passionate fan base for the show that they're talking back to the show, and the show's talking back. I mean, more so than than a lot of television, it does have a feeling that it is in conversation with its audience. Well, and- in, in terms of taking on more, Empire started taking on issues like Black Lives Matter and police brutality. What do you make of how Empire's handled big social issues? You know. Now, I think that what's fascinating to me is the show can kind of embrace all of it. It can embrace this over-the-top camp. It can embrace, in, it, you know, embrace these real political issues because that's what's really happening in the lives of the characters. So Cookie spent time in prison. Um, you know, Lucius came up through a, you know, the, a poor background in Philadelphia. So it does feel, and as much as these lives are sort of over the top, it feels in keeping with their lives. The other thing the show does actually remarkably well in its own over-the-top way is portraying um, gay and lesbian characters on the show. It is, you know, again, in ways that are multifaceted, uh, in ways that are complicated. So it's not the noble gay characters. They're often duplicitous or backstabbing. Um, You know, Jamal, the middle son in the family, is gay, and there's a whole sort of part about him coming out, and then he has an affair with a woman. And and so I think that the show is really actually smart. I I think it shows that a soap opera can handle these issues in a really smart way. Emily, you made reference to Shakespeare earlier as well as Jay-Z, but is a nighttime soap just too silly to deal with these kinds of topics? I don't think so at all. I think it would be really, really weird if Empire did not talk about Black Lives Matter and mass incarceration. I think that if you're going to have a soap opera that is about a black family, you can't avoid this sort of politicization. It is what is the hugest news right now. And I think that they handle it really well because they fold it into the plots. And, you know, we also have horrible depictions of mental illness, (laughs) 
But we have that alongside, as Rachel pointed out, really interesting depictions of gay and lesbian characters. It doesn't make sense to me that they would decide not to touch this other thing that is a huge, huge deal. I mean, in the premiere that you mentioned, there the the concert, it kind of actually looks exactly like what we saw at the Grammys, you know, um, like with Kendrick Lamar's incredible performance. And to me, if they're not touching on that part of the culture, which is what we're all talking about, then they would not be doing a very good job. Steven, yeah. uh, you brought up Dynasty. I don't yeah. think we would expect social commentary <laughs> from Dynasty on no, this level. I'm not level. so sure that's true. Okay. I mean, because Dynasty was always, it was about income inequality and was about, you know, it was about <laughs> yeah. marriage, the state of marriage, right? So it's, I and, it, you know, it reflected the 80s perfectly, <laughs> right? And this is just reflecting <laughs> this time. I mean, think about, think about Al Sharpton. Uh, you know, started off as a manager of James Brown, became a preacher, and then became a political activist with a huge number of constituencies. I mean, it, there is a sort. There's always been a sort of blending and a, and a reflection back and forth between the political and the artistic sides of these questions. 